This is my first video lesson for Unit 4, the periodic table. Today, we're going to talk about the parts of the periodic table. So I'll go to page 2 in the class packet. You can download the class packet for Unit 4 on my website. The link will be in the description of this video. Motivation. Define the word trend. When you hear the word trend, you automatically think of the word pattern. Just like in any trend, there's always going to be exceptions. So here's an upward trend, right? It's going up, but note it goes down in certain parts of the trend, okay? So we will be discussing trends of the periodic table, but today we're going to focus on the parts of it. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I will be able to explain how the periodic table is organized and describes its aspects. The homework will be a Junipod based off of this lesson. Now I want you to pause this video and watch a TED video about the periodic table. How for centuries people try to organize the elements into a table. It is the first video in the descriptions. Once you watch it, resume this video. Okay, so assume everybody has watched the video. We're first going to go over how is the periodic table organized. If you look at the periodic table, it is organized by atomic number. Is increasing from left to right consecutively. The columns are called groups and the rows are called periods. If you watch the first video, you may have noticed that many people try to organize the elements into a table. They use different properties such as atomic weights, chemical and physical properties, but ultimately people decide to use Dmitri Mendeleev's table. So here is a copy of Dmitri Mendeleev's table. Notice that he did not order them by atomic number. He did atomic mass or formula. So the question is, why was Mendeleev's table adopted by other scientists? So to answer this question, I want you to pause this video and watch a second TED video on the genius of Mendeleev. So the link to the video will be in the descriptions. Once you watch the video, resume this video. So I assume everybody has watched the video. So I'm going to quickly summarize it. So if you look at his table, he left blanks for elements that are not discovered yet. So this was something that other scientists did not do. And he decided to use that to predict these elements properties that aren't discovered yet. So the reason why other scientists adopted his table, because his table was useful, right, for predicting future elements properties that aren't discovered or made yet. So this is a fairly recent news article highlighting that four new elements are being added to the periodic table. Most likely, these elements are synthetically made in the lab. So in the future, there might be even more elements being added to the periodic table. So the periodic table on your reference table that you use for the regions is outdated. Check of understanding. Are the elements ordered by atomic mass? The answer is no. So let me zoom in to a part of the periodic table to show you this. So notice over here, it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes back up. So this highlights that the elements are not ordered by atomic mass. They're ordered by atomic number. Now keep in mind, Dmitry Mendeleev's table is, was ordered initially by atomic mass. It was another scientist that came along that proposed changing it to the charge of nucleus or atomic number. It was Antonius. So just to review, Atomic mass is found on the periodic table is the weighted average of the atomic masses of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. We will come back to this when we talk about nuclear chemistry in the future. So even though the periodic table is not organized by atomic mass, there is an atomic mass trend. So atomic mass increases from left to right of the periodic table and increases from top to bottom. Okay, so this is a trend, so there will be exceptions. I already showed you one. Learning check number one. The elements on the periodic table are arranged in order of increasing what? So I'll pause the video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so the answer is two, atomic number. So I am going to review some terms. On the regions, they assume you already know what these terms mean. Let's start with malleable which means ability to bend. So here I'm bending some metal. Ductile means ability to be shaped into a wire. Brittle means ability to break. For example, here is salt. 
luster means shiny, not dull. So here's a shiny penny. A periodic table of elements can be divided into three categories, metals, metalloids, or non-metals. In this table, we will be comparing and contrasting their properties. Let's start with metals. Metals tend to lose electrons, while non-metals tend to gain electrons. When metals lose electrons, they become positive ions, or cations. When non-metals gain electrons, they become negative ions, or anions. Metals conduct heat and electricity, while non-metals don't. They are insulators. Metals tend to have low ionization energy and electronegativity. So I'll discuss what these two terms mean in future lessons. Non-metals, on the other hand, have high ionization energy and electronegativity. Metals are malleable, ductile, and have luster. So here's an example of, of a metal. This is gold. For non-metals, they are brittle and dull. So this is an example of sulfur. Now let's talk about metalloids. Metalloids have both metal and non-metal properties. So here's an example of a metalloid. This is silicon. They look like metals, but they typically behave like non-metals. So here are the seven metalloids that you have to memorize. Right? So make sure you memorize this for the regions. I'll show you an easy way to memorize it. So metalloids are also known as semi-metals. So sometimes in textbooks or even on the regions, they might use this term instead of metalloids. It basically means the same thing, metalloids and semi-metals. Learning check number two. What is a property of most metals? So pause this video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so the answer is two. So this is based off the previous slide, the property of metals. There. So now we're going to label the periodic table. Let's start with alkali metals, which is in group one, except for hydrogen, because hydrogen is a non-metal. Next, we have alkaline earth metals. That's group two. Next, we have halogens or halides. That's group 17. Noble gases is group 18. For the metalloids, I'll show you an easy way to memorize it. On the periodic table, you notice there's a staircase here, right? It's bolded here. I'm going to highlight the staircase for you. The metalloids are the elements that are touching the staircase except for aluminum and plutonium because those are metals. So here are the seven metalloids I highlighted for you. They are touching the staircase. Plutonium and aluminum are considered metals. So now I'm going to talk about which elements are liquid at STP. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. That's found on table A. So there are only two elements that are liquid at STP. They are bromine and mercury. Before I talk about lanthanides, I need to show you this line over here. This line means that these elements here are inserted here. They are part of group three. So lanthanides are these over here. And actinides are these over here. Take a moment to highlight all this in your packet. Typically on the regions, you are expected to know the noble gases, the halogens, the metalloids, which elements are liquid at STP. They may ask about the alkali metals and alkali earth metals, and they rarely ask about the lanthanide and actinides. In this diagram, it is showing the lanthanide and actinide elements inserted into the periodic table. Keep in mind, they're still considered group 3 elements. In this periodic table, it is highlighting the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. Notice that the metals are on the left side of the periodic table, besides hydrogen, they're the left of this staircase, while the nonmetals are on the right side of the periodic table, the right of the staircase. The metalloids is touching the staircase. The only two elements that are touching the staircase but not metalloids are aluminum and plutonium. So take a moment to highlight this information onto the blank product table in your packet. Once you've done it, you can resume this video. Learning check number three. Which element can be brittle or soft in the solid phase and is a poor conductor of heat and electricity? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. Okay. So here is describing a nonmetal. Which of these is a nonmetal? Look at the periodic table. So the answer is choice two. Phosphorus is on the right of the staircase. Therefore, it is a nonmetal. Learning check number four. 
Which list of elements contain a metal, nonmetal, and metalloid? Pause this video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so here's the answer. So beryllium is a metal, silicon is a metalloid, chlorine is a nonmetal. So here is another periodic table highlighting the main group elements and the transition metals. So take a moment to highlight this information onto the blank periodic table in your packet. So these elements here, group 1, 2, 13 to 18, are considered main group elements. The elements in the middle, these metals, are called transition metals. So here is a periodic table highlighting the phases of the elements at STP. You should already know how to figure out the phase of the elements using table S. We discussed this in unit 1. So the ones highlighted white are solids, blue are liquids, and yellow are gases. So which group have all three states of matter, STP? So by looking at this periodic table, it is this group here, group 17, that is the halogens. Which group has only solids at STP? So an example of that would be group 2. These are all solids. Which group has only gases at STP? That would be group 18, the noble gases. Why do elements in the same group have similar properties? The reason for that is because of the same valence electrons. Valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outermost shell. Group 1 has one valence electrons. That means each element have one electron in the outermost shell. Group two has two valence electrons. Each element has two electrons in the outermost shell. So here's an example. Noble gases is group 18. They have complete filled valence shell. They are monatomic elements. They are unreacted gases at STP. Inert means unreacted. So let's do a learning check. Which list of elements with the most similar chemical properties? Pause this video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so the answer is choice two. Why? Because these elements are in the same group, group 16. So this is the last periodic table I'm showing you for this video lesson. This is the timeline of discovery of each element. Keep in mind, this will not be on the exam or on the regions. I'm just showing you because it's interesting. So this is the elements from ancient times, the early 1700s, the mid 1700s to the mid 1800s, the late 1800s, the early 1900s, the mid 1900s, the late 1900s, and the early 2000s. Keep in mind, on your reference table, periodic table is dated 2011, so it doesn't have these elements over here. If you look at the periodic table in your reference table over here, it says UUT, UUQ, UUP. So those are just placeholders for the elements to be discovered. Right now, we're in the future and they're discovered already. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipod homework.